All right, hey guys, uh, this is Jesse from Pass Fire. Uh, I'm down at Wayne's World Fireworks. Uh, it is Saturday the uh, 5th of uh, October now, and we're here for uh, Wayne's fall demo. Uh, really excited today, I've got Ned Gorski with me. Uh, he's from fireworking.com, great website. Now I know you uh, brought some stuff down with I you. Uh, you wanna just tell me a little bit I about what a, you got? I brought a 12 inch uh, ball shell with willow diadem stars in it. I'm experimenting with a new heavier containment uh, casing on these shells and a little different burst charge, trying to get a big round burst on this on this shell, big round burst of willow diadem stars that'll then hang a long time. I'm wiring two E-match into the two liters going into the shell for redundancy. I'm wiring those in. I'm wiring those in series. They'll go. They'll be going into one lead, going to the firing panel. So the one lead from the firing panel will fire two E matches, and both leaders go into the bottom of the shell. Can you tell me a little bit more about this shell? Again? Yeah, it's a 12-inch willow diadem shell. It's a very simple shell. It's got one layer of 420 willow diadem stars in it. They're slightly smaller than one inch in there. Uh, the burst charge is seven to one black powder on rice holes, completely filling that void inside that one shell of stars. Um, and that's dusted with slow flash booster. It got about 60 grams of slow flash booster in there. The, the difference in this shell, as, as opposed to what I've made before, is I've, I, on, the, on the wasp machine, Jim uh, Widman's wasp machine, I made slightly smaller uh, hemis on that. They're 10 and 3 8 ID, and they're about 3 16th inch thick. And on top of that, I've got a, almost 3 8 inch of, of taped um, wasp taping on there. So the actual casing's about a half inch thick. So it's, it's more confinement and a slightly more stout burst charge, getting that big, round, spherical, symmetrical burst. That's the idea, and I shot one last week, and it worked really well, so I'm optimistic about this one tonight. And on top of that, it's just got a big 3 and a half inch Chrysanthemum 6 uh, titanium, ferrotitanium common on it for a big rising tail on the way up. It's got about uh, two and a half inches of time fuse on it, so it should go up for about seven, seven and a half seconds and then break right at apogee. Yeah, these are um, six pound, what they would call six pound black powder rocket motors. They're actually an inch and a half ID. The six pound doesn't have any real correlation to anything in the real world. Um, so inch and a half um, ID, 16 inch long black powder core burning rocket motors. They'll leave a nice real pretty charcoal tail. They're not a real uh, hot, powerful motor. They have a lot of coarse charcoal in them, so they leave a nice coarse charcoal tail on the way up. They will burn for about five to six seconds, and then the five inch cylindrical heading will burst. Hopefully, you, you, filmed, you filmed a lot of Tom Rebenklaus rockets where he has that rocket go up, and then his headings break. He actually calls his rockets orientation devices. The idea is to have that rocket motor still going up with the sticks pointed at the crowd so when the heading breaks it breaks symmetrically to the crowd one of the disadvantages of a cylinder a shell or rocket heading is that it's dependent on orientation in the sky to really look just perfect to a crowd the rocket motor helps as opposed to an aerial shell the rocket motor helps orient that heading so it breaks round this, uh, there's two of these that have charcoal metal uh, comets in them one of them has crackle in the comets uh, about 61 comets in each heading on two of the headings. The other one are just variegated multicolor color stars in there. I'm experimenting once again with a brake charge in there. Um, they're, they're randomly loaded stars with black powder coated with slow flash booster on the uh, black powder granules. And I'm mostly interested in seeing tonight if these rocket motors, which have an inch and five eighths delay above the spindle, if they lift those headings to just the right height, but they're still going away from the crowd a little bit before the heading breaks. And then I want to see how the headings themselves break and display in the sky. Why I use four sticks on a rocket, whereas we're used to seeing one or maybe two. 
if I used one stick it would to stabilize the rocket in flight, which depends on weight and uh, drag behind the rocket motor. To stabilize this rocket with one stick would require oh, prob probably a one inch by one inch, eight foot long stick. Whereas I can get by with the five foot uh, long sticks, four of them, these are about three eighths by three eighths. I can get by with four sticks and a shorter rocket motor it makes the construction and the loading of the rocket more e easy, easily done uh, and also creates a little less dangerous fallout when it's coming down out of the sky. I am wiring the four cues that will ignite the rockets into a Cobra module firing system and then I'll test them for continuity and then I'll just I won't arm this till right before shoot time. What I'm figuring for tonight um, I'll shoot these probably around 9 o'clock or so when it's good and dark. Then I've got to take this module down there and hook it up to the 12, and I'll shoot that sometime shortly after that. <laughs> Hey, that was a dead rocket right there. Handmade, you guys. How many of y'all just wish Uncle Ned was your uncle? Be like, hey, let me come on and hang out for a minute. All right, let's hear it for Ned. That was the four rockets he's made by himself.